Happening now, Jamestown Pride kicks off today. What to expect for the upcoming weekend. And a committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack outlined their case yesterday, showcasing that they believe the attack was called on by former President Trump. Plus, Jamestown schools are back at it, trying to raise money for a local women's shelter. Their latest efforts coming up. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Bronson Rasmussen. Latest local news is coming up. But first, we start today by outlining what local pride groups are doing this weekend. We are joined by Alyssa Wright, who is standing out in front of the Winter Garden Plaza, where the festivities are slated to take place. That's right, I'm here at the Winter Garden Plaza where they're starting to set up for the Pride celebration that's going to happen tomorrow. While it is starting tonight, the big festivity isn't going to take place until tomorrow here at the Winter Garden Plaza. There's going to be speeches, there's going to be yoga at the Comedy Center, there's a whole bunch of stuff for everyone for all ages and it's really exciting. Everything is going to get rocking here tomorrow at about 3 o'clock. There's going to be a parade, kind of, leading from 3rd Street to here at 2. Then at 3 o'clock, the Euclads, um, which is a local group, is going to take the stage. Then at 5 o'clock is going to be DJ Little Italy from Buffalo, New York. And then at 7 o'clock, we have an amazing show. Pride has officially kicked off today and a full list of their events can be found on our website at WNYNewsNow.com. Now, switching gears just a little bit, I guess we'll get a first check of our weather forecast with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. How's it going over there, Dakota? Happy Friday, Bronson, and happy Friday to all of you. And I'll be out at Pride at, uh, at uh, the Pride Fest tomorrow. So, yes, have your 8x10 glossies. I'll have my Sharpie. Uh, anyway, uh, a live look from the Lake Park Sky Cam showing you a ah, nice sky out there for this Friday. Satellite and radar composite showing you that. Nothing in terms of rain, but notice how the clouds are starting to break apart from west to east. So again, you know, we had some of that early cloud cover, but they will go away and lead to some good sunshine for this afternoon. 63 was the high yesterday, only 63. We started the day at 48, 90 and 33 are the record. So through the afternoon, as I just told you, the clouds are going to continue breaking apart from west to east. Then it turns mostly sunny and milder, 67 to 75 with a west wind. Now we'll give you a look at the Pride Fest forecast plus some warm up coming by next week. We'll talk about it with that ultimate satellite solution seven day forecast later on in the show, Bronson. All right, we'll see you then, Dakota. The select committee investigating the January 6th U.S. Capitol attack outlined their case that former President Trump and his staff tried to orchestrate a coup. Testimonies from participants from the attacks say that they were called to the Capitol by the former president. What really made me want to come was the fact that, you know, I had supported Trump all that time. Uh, I did believe, you know, that the election was being stolen. Um, and Trump asked us to come. He personally asked for us to come to D.C. that day. And I thought for everything he's done for us, if this is the only thing he's going to ask of me, I'll do it. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. Did you call President Trump mentioning going to the Capitol during his speech? Oh, yeah. So that's one of my disappointments. He said he was going to go and go with us, that he was going to be there. I know why I was there, and that's because he called me there, and he laid out what is happening in our government. He laid it out. But I remember Donald Trump telling people to be there. Right, I mean, to support. So you mentioned that, pre that the president asked you. Uh, do you remember a specific message? Basically, yeah, he asked uh, for us to come to D.C., that big things are going to happen. What got me interested, he said, I have something very uh, important to say on January 6th or something like that. Is what got, what, what, what got me interested to be there. You know, Trump has only asked me for two things. He asked me for my vote and he asked me to come on January 6th. The committee also revealed that Trump did not call for backup when the attack started. This is just the first of about six public hearings. The committee plans to meet again next week and reveal even more information on the Capitol attack and the attempted overturn of the 2020 election. A Jamestown woman was arrested after allegedly stealing a wallet at a Fredonia Tim Hortons Wednesday. 
Troopers out of the Fredonia Barracks responded to a stolen wallet complaint at the Tim Hortons in the town of Promfit. The women who reportedly had her wallet stolen had mistakenly left it on the counter while having breakfast with her two-year-old son. When the women realized she left her wallet on the counter, it was already gone. Troopers were able to recover surveillance footage showing a female later identified as 36-year-old Sabrina N. Gibson had allegedly taken the wallet proceeding to a darker colored van. Troopers later identified the vehicle as well as a female occupant that matched the description of Gibson. Troopers then stopped the vehicle and took Gibson into custody without incident. Gibson was charged with criminal possession of stolen property in the fourth degree and criminal contempt in the second degree. She was released on appearance tickets for later this month to appear in the town of Promfit. The annual Rib Fest celebration in Celeron is now halfway through the fourth day, the four-day cooking festivities. Spanning from June 9th until the 11th, Rib Fest brings a variety of vendors to the Lucille Ball Memorial Park for a variety of barbecue cuisine, crafts, and novelties. Saturday the 11th will host a slew of activities for the public to enjoy. Planned events include a ride to Find em Poker Run at 10.30 a.m., a cruise-in starting at noon, as well as a DJ slate, slated to make an appearance later in the day. Community members are encouraged to stop by the free event and support local vendors that came out. It's been more than 18 months since COVID-19 vaccines first became available for adults. And now, the White House is preparing to roll out COVID-19 vaccines for young children. Vaccine advisors from the FDA and CDC first need to review data on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that will take place next week. The agencies are expected to sign off on vaccines. The White House COVID-19 Response Coordinator, Dr. Ashish, said that at a White House COVID team briefing Tuesday that for children older than five, the data on vaccines is unclear. We know that for kids over five, vaccines have made a tremendous difference. Kids who are vaccinated are far less likely to get seriously ill from COVID. They're far less likely to end up in the hospital or in the ICU. And they're far less likely to get complications of COVID, like multi-system inflammatory syndrome of children. According to a White House fact sheet, the first vaccinations for children under five could start as soon as the week of June 20th. Well, as WNY News Now continues, Pennsylvania officers are asking for new speed detection radar technology in hopes of improving safety throughout the state. And later, what is happening to your data? When you use, it, when you use the internet, we will find out the answers coming up. Stay with us. WNY News Now, we'll be right back. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Celebrate the end of school and say hello to summer with a day of fun activities for children in the Jamestown area. Hosted by Collaborative Children's Solutions and the City of Jamestown, the first part of the day happens at Northwest Arena, where both kids and parents alike can learn about activities available to youth. Later in the evening, finish out the night at the Tarp Skunk Baseball Game, along with a fireworks show at Russell Dietrich Jr. Park. Stop on down on Friday, June 24th, as we celebrate the end of school and say hello to summer. What is going on, my New York friends? My understanding is that you're in school for a little bit longer than most people, but I got some good news for you. Where are you gonna be on September 10th? In Jamestown, New York, with me at seven o'clock at the Reglina Theater, and you can get your tickets at reglina.com, R-E-G-L-E-N-N-A.com. Make sure that you grab those now. It's gonna be so much fun. Jamestown, New York, September 10th. Come and have fun with me. Catch your first defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. 
EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. What could you lose in a home fire? Your possessions? Your home? Your memories? Don't let your world go up in smoke. Make sure you have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones because fire is everyone's fight. This message was brought to you by the Jamestown Fire Department and the Chautauqua Safety Village. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. At least three people died at a Maryland manufacturing plant yesterday after a shooting took place. The shooting happened at a facility owned by Columbia Machine about 75 miles west of Baltimore in Smithsburg. The suspect is reportedly an employee of the plant. He shot at least one responding officer, a state trooper who was reportedly hit in the shoulder. That trooper reportedly returned fire and also hit the suspect. Both the trooper and suspect suffered minor injuries and were being treated for their wounds as of Thursday night. Police say there is no active threat to the community at that area at this time. Municipal police and officials called on lawmakers to pass legislation that may prompt you to pump your brakes. Legislation House Bill 606 would give municipal police the ability to utilize radar technology to enforce speed limits. Pennsylvania is the only state in the nation where local police are unable to use radar. Currently, only the state police are able to use that technology. Speed trap methods being used by local officers are based off the timing of a vehicle in between two points, oftentimes white lines on a local road. Officers say radar would help slow people down and enforce speed in areas where it can be difficult to set up speed traps. Um, one of the biggest complaints that I get from our general public is uh, the need for traffic calming measures, slowing people down, especially in developments. And so this, is, uh, this will be extraordinarily beneficial to all of us to have radar for that. Opponents say the bill is a revenue grab, but officials today called it a public safety measure. In 2020, speeding fatalities rose 16 percent in Pennsylvania, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. There's concerns that parents are giving their children too much of a, suppl of a supplement called melatonin. Now children across the area and country are overdosing, and it's happening in large numbers. Over the past decade, poison control centers have seen melatonin overdoses spike 530% in children over the past decade. The largest yearly increase was from 2019 to 2020. It was reported numbers spiked by 38% that year. Melatonin is a hormone that helps you sleep for those with insomnia. It's also made in the form of pills, liquids, or gummies. Although melatonin is safe to give to your children, doctors recommend giving in smaller do doses to avoid negative effects. It's hard to imagine a day without the internet. We use it for almost everything, for work, shopping, getting information, and staying connected. But as we navigate the web, there's a lot more going on that we don't see. Erie News Now's Rachel Knapp tells us more. Consumers are increasingly being tracked in a number of different ways. Susan Grant is a senior fellow with the Consumer Federation of America, a nonprofit association of consumer organizations. She focuses on the issue of consumer privacy, which is the handling and protection of personal information given by the customers and how companies and third-party data agencies collect, store, and use that information. These companies can gather a range of info about you, like your name, address, your purchase history, your computer's IP address, 
which websites you visit, and even the apps you use. When an advertiser wants to find the right audience um, for its products and services, there are a lot of middlemen involved. Um, the companies that, for instance, lurk on websites to follow consumers around um, to see what they're um, reading, what they're buying, um, and what they're interested in, and then follow them from website to website um, in order to profile them, um, make money by um, saying to advertisers, we can help deliver an ad to somebody on a website somewhere um, uh, who's likely to be interested in your um, products or services. Businesses argue that they use this information to improve customer experience by modifying their digital presence, goods or services to better suit the current marketplace and change up their marketing strategy to target those who are more likely to engage. And that can seem relatively benign, but even then, um, an ad that's delivered to you uh, on your phone or on your computer, or even that you get uh, in the mail, um, may offer you one particular deal uh, based on profiling you. Somebody else might be offered a quite different deal from the same company. The Federal Trade Commission is supposed to oversee privacy and security enforcement and can initiate privacy cases if a company is using unfair and deceptive acts and practices in the marketplace. The FTC declined to interview with us, but Grant says the FTC falls short on consumer privacy protections because they really need to set the rules on what kind of information can be collected and how it's used by companies. But in the meantime, she encourages state legislatures, even Congress, to look into strengthening privacy laws, but it might not be an easy task. And there are a lot of um, very powerful interests that want to ensure that whatever state legislatures do, it doesn't interfere with their current business practices. Rachel, thank you. At the Capitol, there are many ideas on how to protect individuals' privacy. Although it's such a broad and complicated issue, it will be hard to address for many. Coming up, our featured furry friend is here for the Pet of the Week segment. But first, we'll return with a look at our full weather forecast when WNY News Now returns. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. How prepared is your family if a hurricane shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a blizzard? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, Let's go. you'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. Slow down. Slow down and move over. Move over. When you see signs, lights, vests, please give us some room. Slow down. Slow down and move over. When you need help, it's our job to help you. To save you. Despite the danger. This danger. This danger is real. Do your part. Please. Slow down. Slow down. And move over. Move over. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. Celebrate the end of school and say hello to summer with a day of fun activities for children in the Jamestown area. Hosted by Collaborative Children's Solutions and the City of Jamestown. The first part of the day happens at the Northwest Arena as we ring in summer vacation with a party featuring snacks, music, and more. In addition, several groups will be on hand speaking with both kids and parents about the plethora of activities available to keep our youth occupied. 
Then later in the evening, finish out the home run day with a night of fun at the Tarp Skunk Baseball Game, along with a fireworks show at Russell Dietrich Jr. Park. As a PE teacher, I know the importance of being busy this summer, so stop on down on Friday, June 24th, as we celebrate the end of school and say hello to summer. You can learn more online at ccsolution716.com and watch for updates on the Collaborative Children's Solutions Facebook page. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Fast, accurate, and every day. First Defense Weather. Well, welcome back, everybody. And I wanted to give you a nice little sunset picture from our own Justin Gould, who's on vacation down at Virginia Beach. And Bronson, I want to touch your weather knowledge here very quickly. Do you happen to know what kind of cloud this is right here? I remember you throwing it into the chat, but I really don't remember what you said. This is called a cumulus congestus cloud, or what's known as a towering cumulus. And uh, basically what's happening here is a towering cumulus cloud is always uh, a sign that thunderstorms are on the horizon. So this is always the first thing you see when thunderstorms develop, clouds billowing up into the sky. It's called towering cumulus. So that's what that is, an amazing shot from, from our own Justin Gould down there in, in, uh, in, uh, in Virginia Beach. I'm ready for the weekend, folks. But we've got some clouds downtown right now. 64 is a noon hour with a northwest wind of 16. Even though with this northwest wind, most of us should at least push into the lower 70s today and the dew point down to 45. So it's feeling nice out there. Hey, might not be a bad idea to take your boat out, out, out in Lake Erie. 62 and 67 are the water types temperatures off Buffalo and Erie. Southwest winds 10 to 15 knots. You could be dealing with some wave heights up to around three feet at times. So the power boaters, not bad out there. And even the sail boaters, not bad when you have uh, winds 10 to 15 like that. So today, another day of the Celeron Rib Fest, 3 to 11 o'clock today. A nice afternoon, 71 at 3 o'clock. We'll be dropping down into the lower 60s by the time we go to 9 o'clock. No chance of rain. So again, this will be a nice day to get out and enjoy it. And you might need the sunscreen as well because the UV index could be high, especially when you're dealing with uh, some of that away from the sunshine there as well. So uh, high pressure has built in now. So that's built in now across much of the Northeast, keeping us dry. But we are going to see another chance of rain over the weekend. And that's what we're going to talk about right about now. So the newest run of the computer modeling shows you nothing through the afternoon, uh, pretty much mostly sunny through the afternoon hours. Tonight should be mainly dry. Now this is by tomorrow morning. We have the uh, pride flag raising downtown at City Hall. And even though some of the showers are being depicted away from the area. We could be dealing with at least a couple of showers, but the better chance for the showers is going to be in the afternoon hour. So again, the same thing we've been talking about the past couple of days. Just bring the rain gear with you. You might need it if you're coming to Pride downtown. You might need that. The tarp skunks are back home tomorrow as well. Could be dealing with a couple of rain showers, so we may see the tarps. Hopefully not. And then the better chance of rain will likely come on Sunday. So speaking of Pride, here's the forecast. Not much change. We'll start around 62. Again, the better chance for those rain showers in the afternoon afternoon topping out into the lower 70s. Now the next seven days powered by Ultimate Satellite Solutions. So we're back into the 70s on Sunday. Could catch a couple thunderstorms on Sunday. Monday we bounce back at 77. Look at the warmth uh, going back into next week. Lower 80s but the humidity increases along with that and along with the humidity comes a chance for scattered afternoon showers and storms Wednesday and Thursday. Bronson. This is WNY News Now with live breaking news. Just now we were informed that the Jamestown Police Department and Lakewood Bus Dive Police Department were made aware of a post going around Facebook regarding threats to the tops on Foot Avenue in Jamestown and Walmart on Fairmount Avenue in Lakewood. The threats are currently being investigated by various law enforcement agencies, including the FBI. At this time, they don't believe that there is any critical threat to those areas. Although, as a reminder, last week, Governor Kathy Hochul did sign into law a piece of legislation that will make it so threats such as these can be a crime. Well, in an effort to help animals find their forever home, WNI News Now is partnered with the Chautauqua County Humane Society in a segment called the Pet of the Week. Unfortunately, Brian Papalea couldn't make it here, and we didn't get quite a video about this week's featured furry friend. 
although we do get a picture and a name, right here is Olive. From what we could tell, Olive is a kitten and seems like very happy to be on picture. There's not much more that we can tell from this, but we will get updated by Brian and probably see Olive again sometime in the near future. Well, next, in an effort to help raise money for a women's shelter, JHS students held a car wash last week. Their efforts coming up. With coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tight. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Slow down. Slow down and move over. Move over. When you see signs, lights, vests, please give us some room. Slow down. Slow down and move over. When you need help, it's our job to help you. To save you. Despite the danger. This danger. This danger is real. Do your part. Please. Slow down. Slow down. And move over. Move over. Visit the Northwest Arena on Friday, June 24th, as we celebrate the end of school and say hello to summer. Learn about activities available to youth in the Jamestown area. Plus, end the night with fireworks at the Tarp Skunks game. Learn more online at ccsolutions716.com. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Students from Jamestown High School met at Zion Covenant Church last week to hold a car wash fundraiser for the UCAM Women's Shelter. Our Alyssa Wright does have a package on this, but due to technical difficulties, it will not be on the live show today, but it will be on our website later on in the day at WNYNewsNow.com. And as of reporting this, apparently the total amount raised by the students has accumulated to roughly $8,900 total, which is quite the accomplishment for all of these students working together to try to raise funding for these uh, for this women's shelter that I think we reported on a couple months ago in March. Mm -hmm. Everything's ready for the weekend. <laughs> it, it just nothing wants to work today. I mean, you know, it's just we are all ready for Justin to come back. I know it. It's just you know every time Justin leaves, everything goes haywire. We're surprised the studio hasn't blown up yet. Uh, don't say that yet. We still have a weekend and a Monday without them. So. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us today. That's it for I us. I don't know what else to say. So I know. <laughs> uh, news continues. But again, I'll be at Pride Fest. So again, if you have your 8x10 glossies, I'll have my Sharpie. I'll be out signing autographs. <laughs> Remember that news continues. I hear Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, news continues 24-7 at WNY News Now and in our mobile app. Remember to download it free for today in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And we'll leave you with this live look from outside our studio. Maybe you can get blue skies to cheer you up for the weekend.